Good evening, everyone, and welcome to your No Lend annual meeting, our 84th annual meeting. It's uh, It's been a couple of years since we've had people in attendance, and uh, it's, this is not the crowd that we usually have at John Harden, but we got to start somewhere, right? We are, we are definitely glad to uh, be back to somewhat normal, and thank you for coming, and uh, No Lend of really enjoys putting on our annual meeting and we thank you for being here. At this time, I would like for everyone to stand as I ask Brother Mike Bell to come for our invocation and remain standing for the pledge to our flag by our No Land Rural Electric Scholarship, one of our scholarship winners, Jacob Hinton. Would you bow with me for a time of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the rain that fell upon our earth just a while ago. We needed it, and uh, we thank you for that. But Father, I thank you because you know what we do need, and you provide it so often. I thank you for the opportunity to come to Nolan today and share in the annual meeting. As Nolan reflects back upon the successes and uh, not-so-successful times of this past year, and they set their goals for the new year. I, I really thank you for the word of cooperative. That's such a beautiful word. A cooperative, electric, providing, neighbor to neighbor, people to people. I, I, I thank you the word for cooperative, that it's teams building upon teams. I thank you for Nolan, for its board, for its election, and for its ongoing providing of power and a safe, wonderful community that is powered by lights and all other wonderful amenities of electricity. And now, Father, I ask you to bless this meeting, bless those who are leading the company, bless you for the linemen, the office workers, bless you for all the people that make up this Touchtone Energy Cooperative. Thank you for Nolin and its leadership, but thank you, Father, because it's a good neighbor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge I believe to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Brother Bell. I know if a lot of you probably think Brother Bell's on staff, but he is not. He is just our resident good guy, and we appreciate him coming by to be with us. Like I said earlier, it's good to be here. I want to introduce our, our board. Um, a great group of people to work with. They do a good job. They got the members' best interest at heart always in every decision that we make. District 1 representative, Mr. Buddy Rosenberger, been on the board 43 years. District 2, Gene Straney, 34 years. Rick Thomas, District 3, 17 years. Look at this twice. I'm David Brown, District 4. I've been here 28 years. Linda Grimes, District 5, 13 years. Lawrence Ireland, District 6, 35 years. And our attorneys, John Scott, 40 years. Great group of people. You should be proud of the work and the, that they do and also the work of the nominating committees and the work they put in to find a good candidate to represent you. At this time, I will call the meeting to order of the 84th annual meeting of No Lynn. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion in the back. Is there a second? Thank you. All in favor say aye. <clears throat> motion carries. With our 
drive-through registration this year, we had a total of 2,413 members come by, grab their buckets, say hello to us. And uh, probably the rain today didn't help, but it hurt. You know, it didn't, didn't help, but it was good to have the rain. And uh, we had Cattlemen's Association was here and the Dairy Association was supposed to be here, but it kind of rained them out. So I guess it's a fair trade. Uh, we needed to rain. 216 members <clears throat> have been registered since noon today, and that constitutes a quorum to transact business at this meeting. The official notice of the meeting was mailed on May 27th. <clears throat> the minutes of the 2021 annual meeting were in the bucket of bulbs that was distributed today at the desk. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of those minutes? Motion over here, a second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? <clears throat> I also need, <coughs> excuse me. I also need a motion to approve the minutes as they are presented. Can I get a motion in for that? Motion. Is there a second? Thank you. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed. Thank you. <laughs> the treasurer of our board is Buddy Rosenberger, and he has some comments at this time. Thank you, David. When you registered, you received a copy of the financial report. If you have any questions, please see one of the directors or employees, and we would be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Again, it's good to see everybody. Um, we're hoping that this will continue to grow and get back to normal and, and uh, we like the way members like the way we're doing it now and and uh after two years off we feel like we're on our way back so thank you for that and it's not our fault i mean obviously we've been through a pandemic and we were, our hands were tied so uh but we do enjoy having our annual meeting is there any unfinished business to come before this meeting at this time hearing none is there any new business to come before the meeting To introduce the nominating committee, our attorney, John Scott. Thank you, David. Your general nominating committee members this year were Mark Cochran, Don Wise, Steve Wade, Clayton Ellis, Francis Carter, and Rebecca Breck. They were the general members from district two were two additional members billy can jr and john humphreys and from district six two additional members john tyndall jr and lee williams your nominating committee met on march the third of this year and after due consideration agreed to nominate gene straney as a candidate from district two and lawrence ireland and john tyndall jr as candidates from district six all of these candidates agreed for their names to be placed on the ballot I'm now going to call on Jeff Gregory, who will give us the election teller's report. Jeff? Thank you, Mr. Scott. Uh, 2022 election teller's report. The election tellers for today were myself, Jeff Gregory, Walter Tony Razor, Danielle Brown, Charles McCoy, Price Smith, Mark Cochran, and Harold Thacker. And the election tellers met today at the cooperative office and counted the ballots and the results were for district two mr gene straney 1830 votes for district six lawrence ireland with 981 votes and mr john tyndall jr 859 votes there were 12 write-in votes 28 void ballots 113 blank ballots Gene Straney, having received the highest number of votes in District 2, was duly elected as director to fill the vacancy in District 2. And Mr. Lawrence Ireland, having received the highest number of votes in District 6, 
was duly elected as director to fill the vacancy in District 6. The complete list of all votes is always available for inspection. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Jeff. As the attorney for Nolan, I have examined the report of the nominating committee and the report of the election tellers committee concerning the election of directors for your cooperative. I can now certify that these reports were made in accordance with the Kentucky Revised Statutes and the bylaws of your cooperative. Therefore, the election of Gene Straney and Lawrence Ireland as directors of the cooperative is a valid election. David? Thank you, John. Thank you, Jeff, for chairing that committee and all those people that were on that committee and the nominating committee. And also, thanks, Mr. Tyndall, for putting his name in the hat to run. We, uh, we challenged the nominating committees to, uh, to find good people to run, and it's, sometimes that's hard to do. We, there's a lot of work that goes into this, and some people, you know, you can't take all full-time jobs and things like that. So. We, we appreciate the nominating committee's work in finding good candidates. Can I get a motion to close the business meeting of No Land Rural Electric? Motion, do I hear a second? Second, all in favor say aye. All opposed, thank you. Operation Roundup is something we adopted few years ago and we're very proud of the success of Operation Roundup and here to report on that is their chair, Price Smith. Thank you, David. Good afternoon, everyone. Like David said, my name's Price Smith. I'm the chair of the Nolan Operation Roundup Committee, Board of Directors. Uh, Operation Roundup is a program where NOLIN RECC members can voluntarily choose to round up their monthly electric bills to the nearest dollar and those funds are combined um, in, a, in an account and the NOLIN Board of Dir uh, Operation Roundup Board of Directors uh, solicits grant applications and we distribute those funds to worthy organizations. You know, if, when you consider that the average donation is about 50 cents a month, uh, it's a, a wonder at the amount of funds that the uh, Roundup has collected over the years. We have over 6,400 NOLAN members participating in Operation Roundup, and since its inception, including the distributions we're going to make today, there have been over $294,000 distributed to various groups and programs in our community. So it's with all of our generosity that that's made possible. I do want to uh, tell you and introduce for you our uh, Operation Roundup Board of Directors. Our Vice Chair is Chuck Crutcher. Michelle Rogers is our Secretary Treasurer. Curtis Willoughby, Don Wise, Linda Bacher, and Barbara Prophet are the other members. We received many quality applications this year. We cannot fund all of the applications, but we did award 10 grants and those uh, funds to those grants will exceed $30,000 this year. So I do want to take a moment and go over the list of grant recipients. We had our, our award ceremony for the recipients earlier today, and we took photos and had a uh, ceremony where we uh, awarded those uh, the, earlier today. So our first recipient uh, was Casa of the Heartland, the grant will be used to purchase a projector, a projector screen, Bluetooth speaker and cords for virtual communications. And pictured on behalf of CASA is Executive Director Norma Hatfield. Our next grant recipient was Central Valley Feed the Homeless. Their grant was used to purchase shelving to retrofit a shipping container in order to store items for food for the unhoused in our communities. Shown received uh, accepting their funds is Executive Director Carolyn Culver and a volunteer from the organization, Kathy Roush. The third recipient is the Community Health Clinic. 
This grant was used to purchase an enteral oral x-ray unit and imaging software for their new dental clinic. Executive Director Venus Cornett was on hand to accept their grant. The next recipient is Friends of the LaRue County Public Library. The funds will be used to purchase supplies for their summer reading program and pictured accepting their grant is former president Judy Greenwell and their youngest member Ezra Brooks. The fifth recipient this year is the Hardin County Schools Cecilia Valley Elementary. Grant funds will be used to purchase and install an outdoor rated STEAM equipment, which STEAM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. The preschool teacher Ruth Ann Smith was on hand to accept the award. Next, we have Magnolia Cumberland Presbyterian Church, the Shepherd's, Fi Shepherd's Pie Food Pantry. The funds were donated there to be used to purchase milk, bread, and potatoes for their weekly distributions. And shown accepting their grant is the Executive Director, Gil Myers. Seventh is the Mission Hope for Kids. That grant is used to purchase classroom furniture, supplies for their recreation program, and a laptop. Nellie Thomas, their executive director, is pictured accepting the grant. The next recipient is Project Learn. The donated funds they received are being used to purchase umbrella bases, flowers, and vegetable planter boxes, and soil for planters to renovate the courtyard area for their adult day habilitation clients with intellectual disabilities. Ann Borders, their president, and Julia Lee, vice president, joined us earlier to accept their grant. Next, we have the South Harden Baseball and Softball Leagues. The funds donated will be used to purchase an LED stadium lights for their baseball and softball field. And shown accepting their grant is President Tyler Gardner. The tenth and final recipient is Sunrise Children's Services. Their grant will be used to purchase equipment for their therapeutic sensory room Program Director Emmanuel Mays and Vice President of Marketing and Advancement Richard Burleson were pictured accepting their grant. I do want to thank all the grant recipients for sending representatives to come to our ceremony earlier today so that we could present them properly and have them recognized. On behalf of the Board of Directors of Operation Roundup, I'd like to again express my thanks to each and every NOLIN member that participates in NOLIN Operation Roundup. It's without that support that we would not be able to grant the funds to these worthy organizations. And all of our funds together go to that help. If you're not a member of NOLIN Operation Roundup, we urge you to sign up, and you can do that by contacting one of the NOLIN offices. Thank you. Price and on behalf of the NOLAN board, uh, again, thanks for all y'all do. You do a great job and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Next on the agenda is our president and CEO, Mr. Greg Lee. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our 84th annual Nolan RECC membership meeting. Uh, continuing with our drive-through registration format, we had pretty significant membership turnout over the last couple of days. As David mentioned earlier, 2,413 members registered. Uh, for those of you who visit us at about 9.30 this morning, uh, we had a little bit of a chaotic circumstance. The monsoon and the high winds uh, obliterated our drive-through uh, registration setup, and we had about a dozen employees get completely soaked. So thank you for bearing with us, and after regrouping, uh, we hope we were able to accommodate everyone with their uh, registration cards and making sure they got their bucket of goodies. So despite our minor logistical setback this morning, I wanted to make sure that I... Uh, made an effort to thank all of the employees who have made this meeting a success. Uh, it takes quite a bit of effort to get all of this put together from a logistical standpoint. 
Special thanks to Michelle Rogers, Chelsea Faber, Andy Patterson, Allison Coffey, Sarah Robertson, Sarah Fellows, and the rest of our team who went the extra mile for our members. Stay tuned and in a few short minutes we'll be drawing for prizes for the registered members as well as for the children who return their coloring artwork. Our organization and our deep roots in the communities we serve means something a little bit different to all of us. And what Nolan represented to our great grandparents 80 years ago is far different than what it means to many of the members that we have today. As I've said before, and as I reiterate to each employee we have during their new hire orientation, this is a members first organization. And as long as I'm in charge, we will not waver in that sentiment. We hope to earn your respect through the qualities we exhibit, fairness, equitable treatment, perpetual effort, attention to detail, and an emphasis that you, our members, come first. <coughs> when we succeed, it is through sheer will, sheer will and a want-to attitude. And on those re regrettable occasions that we fail, we dive deep to understand the causes and prevent a repeat. Our commitment to you is not perfect, and it never will be, but by understanding that the only acceptable outcome for you is continued improvement, our missteps will serve as fuel in pursuit of an ever-increasing standard of performance. At last year's annual meeting, I ask that any constructive feedback you all may have be provided to me. We want you all to be proud of your cooperative. To that end, I had a handful of very meaningful discussions with members over the past year, covering a variety of topics. They were enlightening, helpful, and ultimately led to significant positive evolution in our approach. Thank you to those of you who reached out to me when you didn't have to. Your recognition of the profound impact a stakeholder can have has made us all better. In 2021, we found ourselves in the fortunate position to be able to retire just over $4.9 million back to our membership. This marks the third consecutive year that we have issued a general retirement with a cumulative three-year retirement total of over $10 million. Our efforts are ongoing to be able to perpetuate this favorable trend. Staying true to our cooperative principles, the past 12 months has seen us offer mutual aid services for storm restoration at five different cooperatives across three states. All told, our field personnel has worked over 5,300 man hours at other cooperatives to help them out. We value helping our peers in these circumstances so that the favor can be returned if we ever find ourselves in a state of great need. Lastly, I want to mention how grateful we are for our veterans. While COVID-19 prevented us from participating in the honor flight in 2020 and 2021, we do plan to send another veteran to Washington, D.C. this fall. Around the globe, over these last several months, uh, there's been far too many examples as to the importance of our freedom and we really can't quantify its value because without it, we have nothing. We're thankful for the sacrifices made by all of those in our, in our armed forces who help preserve our freedom. It is through their bravery that we can all get a better sense of our own patriotic duty. To all of our members from Fort Knox to Millerstown and from Big Spring to Ball Hollow, we're proud to be a small part of your communities. Thanks again for joining us for today's meeting. It's a pleasure to serve all of you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, on behalf of the board, uh, we never want to pass an opportunity if, to thank all the employees. We probably don't say it enough, but a uh, great group of people. And as Greg alluded to, they all on the same page working hard for the members and that's what a cooperative is supposed to do. So on behalf of Nolan again, thanks to all the employees. There's a lot of work in this thing on the annual meeting. We get to come in here and 
sit up front for 15 minutes and act like we did something, but it's employees and, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, I'd like to challenge all the members that are not a part of Operation Roundup to do so. It's obviously a great thing. Um, and again, it's good to be back and live with people in the audience and we hope to continue that trend. Uh, again, thank you for coming and people out there stay tuned. They'll be back in a minute for the drawing of the prizes, prize winners. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you here today for the 84th annual meeting of Nolan RECC. And really happy to see some really smiling faces in here in the audience. It makes this old guy very happy. With an emphasis on the old, I'm Matt English, your old pal. Been, oh, been here for a long time. I'll address that in a minute, though. But it has been a great day. I think everybody's had a lot of fun today, <coughs> except for this morning. Uh, it has been a crazy week, especially for the Nolan employees. Again, thank you for your work. And really, it has been an amazing year, hasn't it? I mean, we got rid of our masks, well, most of the masks. Uh, we uh, found that artificial intelligence has feelings now. I don't know if you saw that or not, but they, it's kind of scary. A little Terminator action there. We sent William Shatner into space, the Star Trek guy. We also had the trial of the century, didn't we? Johnny and Amber, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Uh, personally, I've lost some pounds or some, some, some size back here, but it seems to have all gone up front here on this side of the house. I'm a little grayer, I turned 50 this year, and that was a big milestone year for me, but the bigger milestone was that my son graduated high school in May. So that was, that's just absolutely amazing to see uh, all of the changes that have happened in the past year. And personally, again, this is my 23rd annual meeting, uh, being your MC and giving away prizes year after year and spending a lot of good time with folks. And over the years, I've gotten to know, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> a few amazing people. From Greg, Sarah, Michelle, good people. Good people. To the board, really good people. To Mickey, to Patsy, to Rick. You guys are awesome. And thank you for putting me on this stage year after year. You're very brave to put me up here. <laughs> and again, especially all the Nolan employees for what you do every single day for us. I was really excited to see that Greg announced that we we're going to have an Honor Flight veteran this year. In 2016, my father went on the Honor Flight, thanks to Nolan. And while you haven't seen them for three years, my family has grown up with Nolan. Uh, my babies were introduced to you on stage. Now they're both teenagers. I can't get them to wake up, oh my goodness, every day during the summer, sleep in, sleep in. And in 2002, I introduced my fiance. We were about to leave to get married in Hawaii. That was 20 years ago. 20 years ago that I brought her on stage. So Melinda, my wife, thank you for, for letting me be up here every year. Whoa, this got serious all of a sudden. So, but the whole point of this is that we're all big happy family, right? Even if I'm a little teary eyed today. We got lots and lots of cousins. We're all cousins, and you know what happens when the cousins get together? We have fun. We party. It's like Christmas in June here at Nolan RECC. So we have lots of presents to give away today. So let me start with, in your bucket, when you went through and when they had the drive through when you came in here earlier today, you had some stuff that you could pick up and look at. I know from experience at these events that you don't always look at these things for a little while. You put the bucket over here and you're like, oh, I got my stuff, where's my prizes? Uh, but there are some really good pieces of information within the bucket. Anywhere from you got your minutes from last year to this really informational piece about solar energy that you wanna look at. 
You've got, of course, what we just talked about with the business meeting and operation roundups in here. This is really pertinent information on where, where the funds went and how you can be a supporter. Also in your bucket, you've got information on how to save some money on your electric bill with Simple Saver. More minutes. And then the fun stuff in the back. I like this a lot. Did you know we're hiring? Make sure you look at this. Everybody's looking for jobs these days, right? So we're also hiring. It was so important for me that I got two of them. <laughs> I guess that's a hint. And of course, the last fun thing in the bucket, passes or, or coupons for passes to uh, the Hardin County Fair. And this is awesome to have every single year because you know that fair price keeps going this way. So you need all the help you can get. A few more things in your bucket there, uh, in your packet there. So make sure you check everything out. Also in your bucket, bulbs. That's why we call this the bucket of bulbs every single year. Even if it's one or two, there's great bulbs in here. And these last forever. So make sure you get them and put them in. And this is awesome. Some sort of adapter that I guess, you know, it really doesn't work if you do it this way. You have to plug it into something, but it's a nice little adapter. Really nice. Thanks guys for giving this to all the members. And so speaking of Christmas, we have a lot of presents that we're going to give away in a few minutes, including a grand prize of $500. I need a woohoo out of this small crowd here. All right, good, thank you. Uh, before we give away the money, I do like to tease. I'm gonna make you wait. I also wanna recognize that Nolan has been giving to kids. Kids are such a big part of this community, especially the Nolan community. They've been giving to kids for years upon years. So thank you, Nolan, for doing what you do for kids, including uh, giving scholarships every year. The 2022 scholarship winners include Rachel Ritchie from North Harden High School who got the Bob Wade Memorial Scholarship. We all miss Bob too and it's a great scholarship for her to have. She deserves it. She's been a big part of this community in many ways. Also from E-Town High School we had Clint Chambliss getting a scholarship this year. From Fort Knox, Reiko Gumaban uh, from Central Harden High School. Madison Jones from LaRue County High School. Jacob Hinton from John Harden High School, Keandre Strand. From Central Harden High School, Melin Miller. From Grayson County High School, Jaden Forsyth. And the Continuing Education Scholarship this year went to Brenda Nunn. And then this morning, these, these wonderful kids got to go on the trip of a lifetime to Washington, D.C. as part of the Nolan RECC Youth Tour. And those include homeschooler Molly Hobbs, Elizabeth Pepper from Central Harden, Braden Shearer from E-Town, Haley Turchek from DuPont Manual, and Hannah Martin from Central Harden all got to go to Washington, D.C. and see all the sites up there. There's so many cool things to see, and that, that's a great thing for them every year. So again, thanks to Nolan for taking care of the kids. And the other thing that we like to do for the kids at Nolan is spoil the heck out of them. We've been given prizes from bikes to money every year for so many years now. And uh, this year we let the kids do the coloring contest again. So look at this one. You ready to see this one? You might want to zoom in on this one. Bum, 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 bum. It's great. It's a little Star Wars action. Uh, look, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful work here done by some kids. Look at this, flowers and smiley faces everywhere. This is Wilma Wired Hand. Somebody changes that one up a little bit. There's a good one. You know this one's just some little guy, one year old, two year old, just coloring away. It's beautiful. There's another one, lots of good color in this one. And then this one's just bright and shiny everywhere. After the rain today, we needed a little bit rainbow in our lives, didn't we? So there we go, some really nice drawings from the kids. So I get to put these in the box. Let's put it up here. I don't see any kids to give coins to out here, so I guess I get to do this all by myself. 
if I can unlock the thing. There we go. I won't put these in the box because this is the other half of it. The actual names are already in the box. Let's get these all mixed up a little bit in here. Okay. So prize is time. We had 188 coloring pages submitted. And out of those, we're going to draw 10 $25, for $10, $25 gift cards to give to these kids and spoil them even more. So I'm going to get 10 winners. And because of you know, all the pandemic and less people here, you don't have to be present to win. So we're just going to hand out money left and right. Here we go. Our first winner, Sarah Mattingly, who is six years old daughter of Jeremy and Carrie Mattingly. Congratulations, Sarah. I'll just bring them all over to you in a minute. All right, let's get in there and get a few more. Avery, who's age five, and uh, Eric Bailey is the parent. Congratulations to Avery. Don't fly out on me here. Collins Patterson, two-year-old, uh, son of Chase Patterson, congratulations. That's three. Make sure you keep my count for me. You know I'm getting older. I can't remember things. Okay. Davion Welch, 11 years old. Christopher Peake is the member parent. Four. Five-year-old Emily. Uh, the member name is Ellsworth Turner on this one, so congratulations to Emily. All right. Vivian, she's six years old, and John Saunders is the member name. Let's dig in here a little bit more, get a few more. Kalia Young. Kalia Young, who also has a member name of Christopher Peake next to that. So a couple of beautiful kids. Looks like a whole family gets money there. How many is that? We got three more. Okay, thanks. Lana Beecham, eight years old. Crystal Beecham is the member name. Two more of these beautiful $25 cards. Let's see what we got. Abby Shader, 12 years old, and Sarah Shader's mom. Okay, one more. Who is our last winner here? There we go, now I need the glasses even tighter. Brody Brown, nine years old, daughter of Alicia H. Brown. That's our 10th winner of the $25 gift card for our coloring contest this year. Thank you kids for all your drawings and congratulations to all of you kids who won the $25 gift cards. I'm gonna step over here, you stay where you are, and we're gonna do the big prizes here in a second. All right, let me see if I can remember how to do this. Just pull it. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's hard work. All right, so we, ha we have a bunch more prizes to give. Uh, let me just run them down for you. It ranges from 10 $50 prizes, five $100 prizes, two $250 prizes. Our grand prize of $500 is actually what we're starting with. And the reason we do that, that means that all the names are still in here to get that big grand prize. So that way we don't work, we're working the right direction for everybody here. And maybe it'll be somebody in the crowd here today. Wouldn't that be awesome? You get to come up and hang out with me and we get to cry together and laugh together. <laughs> all right, maybe I should spin this a little, a little bit before I do this. Yeah. 
It has a little knob on it. I could use that. It's harder. All right, let's pull those out of here. 2413, 2413, was that the number? Wow. Your odds went down big time this year, folks. All right. Oh, it's Matt English again this year. Dang, I keep winning. No, uh, our winner of a $500 prize. Congratulations to Ann Cecil of Radcliffe. $500 is yours, and I guess you're not here. So let me pass that over here so we've got it off to the side. Woo, congratulations, Ann. All right, and now we gotta get two $250 prizes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix these up one more time. went to the doctor recently and he told me to lose weight and exercise more. That's probably why I can't spin this thing. All right, first $250 prize is Patricia Downey of Radcliffe. Congratulations to Patricia. And our other $250 prize goes to Dana and Joseph Sego of Sonora. So congratulations, two $250 prizes. Pass it over here, good job. Woo, 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 woo. All right, moving on. I'll spin it again because we have five $100 prizes to give away. Wish I could just go. Okay, what we got here? Five of these. Help me keep count. Easy for me, right? First winner, Richard Hellcamp of Elizabethtown. Congratulations to Richard. Our next winner, Brenda Miller of Hodgenville. Way to go, Brenda. Oh, well, I'll get them in a minute. Heather Hines of E-Town. Heather Hines is winner number three. Winner number four is Marie Chambers or Chalmers of E-Town. Congratulations. And our final $100 winner. Teresa Webb of Cecilia. Teresa Webb is our last $100 winner. Congratulations to all of you. There we go, thank you. All right, money's money. $50 can go get you about a half a tank of gas these days. So let's give those 10 $50 winners a shuffle. Ah, I got it. Woo, look at that thing roll. Just please don't hit anybody in the front row, okay. HR don't like that. All right, here we go. I got 10 of these to give away. Winner number one is Douglas Branson of E-Town. Congratulations, Douglas. Winner number two is To be folded. Ryan Cooper of E-Town, congratulations. All right, let's dig in here. Number three is Herschel Quick of Rhineville. I'll go left-handed this time. Mix it up, maybe we'll get one of those winners in house. Number four is Martin and Christina Glickman of Radcliffe. Let's see here. Where am I not dug? How about up here in the corner? What number? 
five. It's our fifth, okay. <laughs> Just losing track. Brain doesn't work. Bill Brummett of Rineyville. Congratulations to Bill, number five. Let's get to number six. And that is... This one got some rain on it. Either that or grease spots. Ew. Uh, John Filburn and Mrs. John Filburn of Vine Grove. All right, number seven. Jacob Pearman of Vine Grove. Congratulations. Number eight. Jasmine Ireland of E-Town. That was number eight, right? All right, we got two more of these. Switch back. Y'all didn't know it was ambidextrous. All right, there we go. No, let's do that one. I'm teasing, I'm teasing here. All right, here we go, number nine. Doris Holleran of Hodgenville. Teasing, teasing, teasing. See, one more spin. Ah. And let's get our last winner. I think I may have broke it. There we go. I'm talking about me, not this. All right, last one. And our 10th winner of $50 is Joanne Merrifield of Sonora. Joanne Merrifield, you are 10th winner, and congratulations to all our winners. So that wraps it up for our time today. We gave away all the prizes. We showed you coloring pages. I cried a little. Oh, sorry about that. But anyway, thank you for coming to the 84th Nolan RECC Annual Meeting. God bless you, and we hope to see you next year.